Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class today. Welcome everybody. I see your comments rolling in. I apologize for being a few minutes late. Kind of out of the uh, routine. I'm, I'm going to blame it on that. I woke up in time. I just couldn't pull my act together <laughs> in time. So I'm sorry I'm three minutes late. Thank you for waiting, and um, I hope you're all staying warm. I know that there's like a, a cold spell going across um, most of the U.S., uh, or it had been. I don't know. I was on vacation. I was in California. Hang on a minute. And I caught a little cold while I was out there. So, um, but I'm excited to share with you because this card is fantabulous. You are going to love it, this, this fun fold card. So I saw this card idea um, shared by a few others out there, but it involved um, it involved a few more steps, like taking six individual pieces, creating these diamond or square shape little columns, and then connecting them all together. So I did a little bit of math, and I worked out you know you know those puzzles where you try to get to one you know you try to close the circle by just drawing your line once without picking up your pencil. So I played that game with the top of the card. And I thought, how can I start this and continue around until I can cover as many of these little tubes as possible, these columns as possible. And I came up with a way to use just two long sheets of paper and fold them into each other so that you can create um, this card. And it's, it's so fun, you're gonna love it. Oh, Tracy's from Coon Rapids, hi, next door neighbor. Um, welcome, you guys. Thank you so much. It's January 17th, 2024, as I'm coming to you live. The title of this live is Star Column Cards with the Most Adored and the Heartfelt Hexagon. So we're going to be using the Heartfelt Hexagon Bundle, which is a stamp set and punch combo. And then we're going to be using the Most Adored Designer Paper. Now you can, again, adapt these kind of product uh, projects with any products that you own. But if you're interested in these products, you can uh, click on the links in my um, YouTube description. When I'm done with this live, I'll carry it over into the Facebook description. Or of course, when the blog post goes live on my blog um, in about an hour, a little over an hour at 12.15 p.m. Central Time, you'll be able to click on links in the blog post and you can shop through me. Now, if you're a demonstrator, shop through yourself. If you have a demonstrator, give them some love and shop through them. So on that note, I think we need to uh, share the PDF that you'll be able to print off. Um, and as I'm moving over there to my computer, I wanna give a big warm welcome to Miss Trisha Josephs and Miss Lisa Marshall. They are my moderators and they are here with us on YouTube and on Facebook. Trisha is on YouTube and Lisa is on Facebook. They are there to answer questions for you. So that is their purpose and they are so wonderful and so knowledgeable. So I hope that you're able to get your questions answered during the live. Um, of course, you can comment after the live and let me know if you have questions that you did not see answered and I'd be happy to help, help you out with those questions. Um, tag me if you can on Facebook because sometimes I don't catch all my Facebook comments, I have to admit. Um, all right, so here's the PDF. This is something that you'll be able to print off when the live is done and, um, and the blog post goes at 12.15ish. So you'll be able to click on the link at stampyourartout.com um, and you'll be able to see this latest project. Um, it is, of course, dated January 17th. So if you're watching this way after the live is done, just try to um, do like a search with the search bar and you'll be able to find this. It's fantabulous, as you can see. Look at those cards. They're so stunning. Um, so they pop open and they stand up and from the top you can see the star shape. Um, they've flattened down to fit into an envelope. You guys are going to love this, okay? Um, you can see the front side and the back side. I've, I've taken pictures of both so that you can see what I did on the back. And now we're going to do it in person, um, live or whatever, so that you can see how it comes together. You do not need to do a screenshot again. You can print off this PDF, but I thought I would let you know that it is available and kind of give you a little peek so that you can prepare your supplies. I know some of you, some of you crazy crafters out there actually um, try to do this along with me while we do the project or while I share. Uh, and that's fine, that's great. If you're a fast crafter, go for it. All right, so here we go. Um, I brought the wrong paper, hang on a minute. Have to go back into my craft room and find it. 
This is the wrong stuff, Rachel. I wonder if it's under my black sheet here. You guys cannot peek. <laughs> See, this is how ready, ready I am. This is a, um, I have an event coming up, you guys. Whoops, things are falling out. I wonder if I can call my husband up here. <laughs> uh, all right, so I don't have my paper with me. Hey, Tim. I wonder if he can help me out. Because we need the paper. We need the designer paper. I don't want to use another batch. Hang on, you guys. I'm going to call my husband. Tim, can you help me out here? Um, all right. So while he's coming up here to help me out, hopefully he can find it. <laughs> I'm going to bring you down to my desktop. See, you guys, I'm not ready. I've, I'm so out of the habit. I'm looking for paper that looks like this. And I don't know where I put it in my room. Oh, I see it. Never mind. I got it. I got it. He's like, oh, I have to put my hood on because I'm not dressed for this. <laughs> I'm good. I got it. Phew. Oh, my goodness sakes. See, I thought I had the right paper. <laughs> I hope those of you that have been watching me for a while can forgive me for my unorganized um, chaos here. I uh, normally am super organized. All right, here we go. Got it. I've got my Heartfelt Hexagon stamp set and the punch that coordinates with it. You can see that there are some um, frame type images in this set and there's lots of sentiments that depending on how you turn your punch, you can include these, all of them, within these frames or you can punch them without the frames. You don't need to use the frames. And then there's some little accent images too, like the heart and the leaves and the flower and the flower and the a uh, little doodad. <laughs> so, oh, thanks so much, Rose. She commented on my hair. You know, we all have good hair days and bad hair days, right? Here's the hexagon punch. She said she likes it today, which is great because I was, I think I put hairspray in it. I think that's what it was. Um, so the hexagon punch, and we'll be using those. And then this is the designer paper. Now I just have to like slow down and breathe a little bit. Yes, Debbie, we do love kind husbands. I was going to somehow bring the camera down onto my desktop anyway so that he didn't, you didn't see him, but the poor man, he's like, wait a minute, what? You want me to be on camera? So this is the designer paper and I don't have it organized like I should have because I was late for my live today, but you can see that we have um, a variety of papers, gold foiled sides, and let's see here, so, um, are there any repeats in here? I'm gonna flip them over. There are six different designs, two of each, and I've already used up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yep, three full sheets on the three cards that I finished. So we only have one of each of those. Your card is going to basically use up a full sheet of 12 by 12 designer paper. So the one that we're gonna be using for the full demo is this one here that looks like pink plaid, it's so pretty. And on the back side you can see hearts. Um, this is, don't worry about the design in that these hearts are upside down and these hearts are going the opposite way, you know what I mean? Because we'll be able to make that work in how we cut it. So again, this is the most adored designer paper. It's available for a limited time. And I pray that it's still available. Uh, I got, I flew in from California. I was on away with my kiddo on vacation in California for a little over a week and I did not even check. Please tell me if this is still available in um, the US, Canada, the um, Europe, you know, South Pacific. I hope it is. This is one of our celebration products. I'm gonna cut at five and a half inches, by the way. And I'm cutting so that the hearts are in one direction one way, and then I'll cut the other side the same way. So five and a half inches by 12. Um, I hope it is, you guys. Tell me if it is. Some of you who are demonstrators watching, you know you can just peek on the demonstrator website and check it out. Okay. Or not even the demonstrator website. The store. Go to stampinup.com. You can all probably help. So we have two five and a half inch tall pieces by 12. Okay, now we're gonna trim off a, um, one inch so that we have 11 inch long pieces. And we'll just do that together because these are pretty thin papers, which is why I chose them. I chose them because designer paper is thinner, not as bulky as cardstock. And when you use this, you'll be able to have a lighter weight card 
And if you don't put on as many embellishments as maybe you need to, you can even mail this as a, a, a pretty inexpensive card because it'll flatten down really well. Um, that was another issue with the other cards that I've seen out there is they're very bulky because they use several pieces. So we're gonna make it so it's um, lightweight and still beautiful and even easier, okay? All right, so now that I've got my pieces cut, I have two pieces that are 11 inches by five and a half. I've got a couple of these one inch strips. I'm gonna use one of them. Um, in fact, I could use both if I wanted to. And then I have uh, some more scraps that I'm going to use for elsewhere. So let's flip these over um, so that they're easier to see against the glass mat. This is our new glass mat studio, by the way. Uh, it is something that you can get if you get the starter kit this month and next month. Lisa says, yes, it's definitely available. Thank you so much. I'm gonna scroll through here and see. Um, currently available in the US store, that's good. Uh, those of you that are watching in other parts of the, um, the world, Hopefully, um, it might not be a good time of the day to watch. So if you watch this later on, hopefully it's still available in your market as well. So now we're gonna take and put some score lines in here. And I'm gonna pull up my measurement sheet just for me so I can make sure I'm telling you correctly. So you're gonna use the stylus tool and you can do this on your paper trimmer with the scoring blade, which is what I've done for all of mine. But I thought I would introduce you to the Simply Scored, which I don't use a lot. But on a card like this, where you're putting several score lines in, this is a really nice handy tool. All right, so we're gonna score at a half of an inch. So this is where my half inch is. And I'm just gonna bring my large, uh, larger, here we go, larger of the two stylus ends. And I'm choosing the larger one because the tinier one presses a little bit crisper. And with designer paper, we don't wanna risk tearing our designer paper. So we're just putting a light score line in here. And then we're gonna to go to the one and a half inch mark. And you wanna keep your paper flush into the corner. So one and a half inches. And again, you just crease lightly, but enough where you're going to put a pre uh, pressure in there and create a, a fold. And we're going every inch at this point. So one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. And now I'm at the five and a half inch mark and six and a half. And the nice thing about the Simply Scored tool is it gives you little grooves underneath the paper or cardstock so that you are in line and staying, you know, in a straight path as you score. This is our nine and a half inch mark and now our 10 and a half inch mark. So what we end up with is a score line of a half of an inch section on each end and then um, one inch, one inch, one inch all the way through the middle. So now I will introduce you to the trimmer and you can do the same thing with that. <laughs> so I'm having the, an event this weekend for my team members that are Silver Elite and above. And it's called the Silver Elite Retreat. So that's why the desk behind me is covered because <laughs> I don't want anyone to see what's back there. It's their surprise. They need to see it first, right? So I'm gonna score at a half of an inch and then I'm just gonna flip it around and go to the one and a half inch mark and continue with that same scoring pattern all the way through the paper. Two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. So you've got these one inch increments in between two half inch increments. So we're at the six and a half, seven and a half. And again, don't press so hard that you tear your paper because designer paper is a little thinner than cardstock. I also chose this because the cards that I've seen out there use an extra layer of designer paper on the different column sections of a card. So now you've got a cardstock and a designer paper layer, and that again creates extra bulk and weight. Then you need a piece that's one by five and a half. So this piece is ready to go. That's gonna be our supporting piece that holds the two halves of the card together. And then I'm just gonna peek on here. We need, um, we need to have some pieces that are one by two. So I'm gonna take and cut this at two inches, and it's already one inch, and then I'm gonna score it in half at one. So we need a couple of those, and I'll just use the same strip so that our design carries over, because our design is going to look like it's flowing into the one that I just did, 
So these two here will flow together. In fact, I kind of like how these ends look, so I'm gonna flip them around. So that's how I'm gonna add them to the card so that I can see a little bit of this on the outside. Those are ready. And then we need four little pieces that are scored halfway at a half of an inch and they're only one inch wide by half an inch tall. These are gonna be little supporting structures. So because I need four of them, um, I'm gonna take a smaller piece here. We'll just use this piece, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna cut it at two inches. And then we're gonna score all of them at a half of an inch. And again, you could use your Simply Scored for this. And then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna cut. So one inch, or I'm sorry, half inch, another half inch. And these don't have to be perfect, by the way. They can be a little off, but we, get, we did pretty well. Okay, so these aren't gonna be seen. They're all tiny little mechanisms and they have a fold halfway through. Okay, so let's set those over here. And these are the only pieces I did not use for the card. So you really, you literally use up pretty much a whole piece of designer paper. I'm gonna bring in the two inch circle punch and our other punch that we have, the hexagon, uh, heartfelt hexagon punch and some scraps. So now I have my basic white scrap and my gold foil scraps. Now with some of the cards, I did use the real red cardstock. So the colors that are within this designer paper are Flirty Flamingo, Real Red, um, let me grab that packet and look again here, um, and that's it, and gold. But I mean, you can see a really light pink in here too that I guess could be kind of bubble bathy. Um, all right, so let's now take and do some stamping. We're gonna grab our early espresso ink pad for this card and some stamps from my stamp set and I don't have my blocks. So again, Rachel is disorganized, but I will grab them. We're gonna need, um, oh, you know what? We're using Real Red. On this card, we're using Real Red and Flirty Flamingo. The second card I share with you, we're gonna be using the Early Espresso. So those are the colors we need right now. And I'm gonna grab my polka dot outline. And I normally have these together too, you guys, seriously. All right, I'm gonna lay that on top of my paper, not on top of my glass mat, because the glass mat wants to grab it. And then I also need my sentiment that says, sending lots of love. So I'm putting those upside down on top of a paper surface instead of my gla glass mat surface. I'm gonna grab my blocks. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna pick up this one and we're picking it up at an angle because I don't wanna rely on the sides of my blocks when I stamp. So I'm, I don't wanna, I don't, you don't need to mount them straight, I guess is what I'm saying. And then this one here, I'm gonna mount that one, kind of kitty wampus here. And if you let it relax on paper, it's not gonna be distorted. It's going to punch better. It's a really um, thin outline stamp and if you put it directly on your stamp just using your hands and instead of letting it relax It might be off slightly. We don't want that to happen. I'm going to use my stamp and pierce mat put that underneath and We're going to stamp using the flirty flamingo ink. So here's our Beautiful ink by the way if you're a beginning crafter you can do this card. It's really easy um, It does not involve any die cutting. It does not involve any heat embossing um, so the tools are pretty simple and easy to use. We have punches, we have ink, we have stamps, we have paper, and we have just fun ways of folding the paper to get the effect we want. So I'm gonna stamp that down. I picked the wrong one, I wanted the polka dot one. Let's go with this, this is fine. <laughs> we'll just do this. Um, and then we need our real red. If this does not look good, you guys, I'll change it out, but I think we can I think we can do this. I messed up and I used this design instead of this one. Because Rachel's a little scatterbrained today. It was so much fun, you guys. My son and I went to LA. It was so much fun. Okay, so if you've been following my Instagram or my Facebook posts on my personal page or my blog, you'll see what we did. He had a blast. 
Okay, that is the end result of that one. Kind of fun, it fits right in that frame. Let's stamp this one again on the other side so we can punch out a couple frames. This one will be on the back of the card because we need a place to sign our card. So you just open up your punch, lay it in here, line it up, and you do it upside down. You line it up upside down. Then with your two hands away from this area so you don't you know, pinch your fingers, you punch. Turn it around, do the same thing over here. And what I forgot to share with you beginners is how to open and close these punches. It's really easy. So there we have that. This little part here closes the punch so it lies flat. So you press it all the way down and then you slide it. So if we want to open this one, we push this forward and we've got our punch ready to go. And I have a smaller scrap here that I think will work. So again, punch out a circle. We don't have to line anything up here, so we can just punch within our small scrap. Okay, let's set that aside. We don't need our punches anymore. And we don't need our inks anymore. All right. We'll also set this off to the side and we can start assembling. You guys, this is such a fun card. Put those over there. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work with our base pieces. And I want the hearts, the little foil heart um, images to be on the outside of the card. So when I'm doing that, just I'm going to keep that in mind that I want them to be outward. So I'm going to fold this way like that. Okay. So now I'm seeing the hearts on the outside of the card. So a little tip, before you actually begin, fold it in half, side to side. You've got your score line already there in the middle. Take your bone folder, give it a good crease. So that's the fold that's going to be in the middle and that's gonna show you that this is the outside of the card. Now we can score and fold, or I'm sorry, just crease along all those score lines. One, two, three, and I believe we do one more, yes, four. This has been a while since I created this card, you guys. Now the last one, there's one more fold here in between, and you're going to fold that the opposite way. Okay, so that's going to go this way. So it's going to go mountain, 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 valley, and then the mountain that's already in the middle is right there. So now let's go to the opposite end and do the same thing. Mountain, mountain, Looking at the top and bottom edges to make sure that they are not um, crooked. Mountain, mountain. So we have four folds going in this direction. And then that last one in between here, you can see it's in between. That one's going to go the opposite way. So that's going to become a valley fold. I'm going to do this again with the other sheet so you'll be able to follow along. Now we need to tape these two ends in inward like this it's going to get taped in like that okay so to do that you're going to see that we're creating kind of a square or diamond shape if you lay it flat it will still stay connected in the same spot so that's the little tip i have for you is make sure that it's flat as you add your adhesive we have a new roll of seal on here sorry about that you can use seal adhesive you can use multi-purpose liquid glue whatever the adhesive of your choice is so I've got that flat, and now I'm just gonna kind of lay it like this, and I'm gonna bring this one on top of it so that we have those two sides connecting to each other. I'm gonna press it down this way. Looks like I need to redo that, hang on. Hang on. We gotta make sure that this folds flat. Let's try that again. Let's fold it over this way instead. Okay, now. There's where my error was. I had a slight, I was slightly off in this section. Okay, so you wanna fold it flat in both directions so that you make sure that this is even, okay? The card needs to be able to fold flat in both directions. That's why your score lines are important there. Now let's add this one to this side. So again, just putting an adhesive right in that half inch wide little section like that. You can take and fold it flat here or fold it flat here, but either way, you're gonna take the other part of your card and you're gonna bring it down on top. And then you wanna test it. Oh good, we did well. <laughs> okay, 
We got it folding flat in both directions. Yay. Okay, next one. So we're going to set that aside. We don't need it quite yet. We're going to do the same thing here where we fold, mountain fold, mountain fold, mountain, and one more. So four mountain folds. And then the opposite way. So that one's going to go this way. And then we should be at the middle here. Let's fold that down flat. Let's check it out. Yep, we're in the middle and we're just going to straighten it and fold one more time. Okay, let's do the same thing to the other side. Mountain fold. Mountain. Mountain. One more, and mountain, and then the next fold. In between that middle crease and the last one we did, it goes the opposite way, so that becomes a valley fold, so it dips in. Again, making sure when you fold that all of your edges on the top and bottom line up. Okay, so now that we have that look, again, we're gonna connect these half inch sections to the card so that you can see two, you know what, this might help. You can see two panels here. This is folded under and then we press it flat. Does that, is that easier? That's probably easier. Kind of done it different each time, haven't I? Okay, and then you just make sure you can crease it in both directions. Let's do that again. Putting adhesive just along the half inch section here. And then we're gonna fold that down under See two sections here and fold it flat. <laughs> and then you're gonna press it and keep folding it to make sure it creases down in both directions. So you should see in the end two panels of the opposite side like that, okay? When you have it flipped over this way versus this way. You should see the opposite paper in here. So what we wanna do now is we wanna connect these two panel, I'm sorry, no, we want to connect these two panels here. So if you're looking at it like this and you flattened it down, you're going to connect these outer two panels so that they're folded inward to these outer two panels that are folded inward. So if I use my little pointer tool here, fold this completely flat and stretched out, this section and this section, fold in fold in, so now they're here, and these are going to connect with these two folded in that are now here. All right, so to do that, to connect these two together, we need a support piece on the inside. This is our support piece, which does not get seen. We're just going to put some adhesive on both sides. We're going to choose either one of these, fold it flat, and I know it's not gonna be seen, but it still bugged me that the hearts were going in the wrong direction. There we go, we're just gonna tape this together like that. So can you start to see the columns? Yay, right? You can see three columns. So if we have that one connected to this one, we're gonna have a six column um, section and together they're gonna to create a star. So now we wanna connect this piece, this piece here, and I'm just gonna to try to shove this over a little bit more because I see a gap in there. I don't know if it'll help or not. Maybe not. Eh, just go with it. Okay, so now this section is gonna to connect to this section. And to do that, I think it's easier if we put adhesive here. So we're gonna put adhesive onto this panel and onto this panel, the whole length of the panel. You want it on both sides. You want it here and you want it here. And even get up into the top there, because I see I missed that. Keep this flat. Okay, it's nice and flat, and we're going to flatten this piece down, keep the hearts going in the same direction, and you're going to line up the corners of the card, and as you put it all down, all four corners should line up, and the middle should be connected, and that's how you get the star. Ta-da! <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. All right. Next is this, and I forgot I need four pieces of this. 
Let me grab two more. Sorry about that. I counted wrong. I need four of these. So we need to do two inches by one, two inches by one, and then we score it down the middle, and we score it down the middle. So sorry. Okay, there, we have two more pieces. So these two are kind of paired together. I kind of like them going this way. And these two are paired together going that way. And they don't have to look like, you know, they line up at all. Like you don't have to worry about that. It's just that you need two pairs. Okay, we flatten our card down. And now we're gonna add adhesive to the back side, which is now the hearts. We're gonna add adhesive to the back side of this entire piece. And you're going to lay it down and you, you can have it high or low, it doesn't matter. So now you can use your grid paper or your glass mat to kind of give you um, an idea of where you're placing your piece. If I put my sentiment here, my middle kind of comes to maybe like this spot in here, okay, so I can see. I'm going down about a half of an inch, it looks like, or an inch. So it looks like I have an inch up here, and then I've connected it down here. And you wanna connect it so that it's in the groove of that fold. One side might pop out a little bit like that. It's okay, you just trim it up. That's normal, because it's not gonna lie completely um, within that zone, there's gonna be a little bit of a uh, excess on either end. Okay, now that one lines up with this one. We flip it over. We put our adhesive across the back side. We fold it and we can connect it. And this time I'm just gonna connect it so that it's kind of shifted over a little bit more to the outside edge, maybe. Let's see what happens here when we fold it now. Crease it. Oh, the excess is here. It might even be on both sides. It just depends on where you put that crease. Let's see. Nope, looks good. Okay, so we've trimmed it up. We have our excess edges cut off. So that is the um, one side of my card. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put these other two on the opposite side. So flip it over, fold it. And again, I have it about one inch up. So I'm gonna look at my glass mat to see one, two, three, four. So this one will go here. That looks good. Give it a good crease. Cut off any excess. You might not even have any excess. You might have cut so perfectly that you have no excess. That one was like a 32nd of an inch. Hardly had any on that one. And then this one goes over here. And just, again, line up your designs. This one has to get shifted a little bit because I need the crease to line up more so than the edge of the paper. I need this crease to be lining up with the crease within here. Okay, and then we fold it, and it looks like I'm going to have to trim off on both of those. So we'll fold it like this. Trim off excess. Fold it like this. Trim off excess. Okay, there we go. Easy, right, you guys? Look how thin this is. It's a super thin card because we're not using a lot of bulk. Now, if you're gonna add lots of layers, like here, I'm adding an extra layer of gold here, or if you're gonna put embellishments on there, like rhinestones and that sort of thing, then your postage might be a little bit extra. So now I'm gonna connect these two pieces together. I'm just gonna add some adhesive through here and connect so that this is sort of centered on the back like that. So you can see just a hint of gold. It's probably better if you look at it against there. Maybe not. Hang on. There we go. So you can just see a little hint of gold on the edges there. So that was just a touch to kind of give it some extra sparkle. And I had some extra adhesive on the end here. Oopsie. I'm using my adhesive eraser. If you don't have one of these, you can go to my, um, my website at stampyourartout.com and you can click on my favorite extras under the shop menu and you can see how to access um, extra tools that I use like the precision tip glue bottle and 
things that I use to store my crafting goodies. So check that out. Okay, so there's one. And then let's go to these pieces here. Sorry, grabbing all those little scraps. And we're gonna connect these together. Just need adhesive through the middle. And connect those down. It's easier when I'm going straight on top, but I kind of have to go at an angle here. How's that? Did I do well? Okay, <laughs> that one looks good. Now any excess, um, uh, if you have excess paper, and I didn't cut mine well this time, but if you have excess paper, you could end up with a strip that you can use along the back side of your envelope so you can decorate your envelope edges so they're fun to give your cards away. All right, so again, started off a little disorganized at the beginning of the video, so I forgot to do that, but you can do it. It, it will work. Okay, we're gonna take, and now we're going to bend these so that they're ready to go, and we're gonna put adhesive on the white side. So let's flip them over, add adhesive here and here. And you're gonna take two of them, you're gonna uh, fold them back onto themselves so you see the white, and you're gonna place them on either side of this middle score line. Don't let them touch each other, but now you've got these little tiny V's that are sitting here ready for your sentiment panel. And this will just go like that, centered on the card. And it connects, and when you open up your card, it will pop out. Just kind of has to get used to itself here. There we go. So it's gonna pop out and be straight because of those little tiny V's that attach it. So when you put your card on display, you've got your fun little sentiment that isn't bent at all. Let's flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. How are you guys doing that, or doing so far? <laughs> all right, yeah, you're gonna have to re-watch this video because Rachel makes mistakes in certain parts and then she corrects herself later. <laughs> so for anybody who is following along, I'm so sorry. Especially like the envelope thing. I forgot to leave a nice long piece of designer paper because you can do that. All right, so there's those little V sections here, little sticky Vs, and then we place this down. And you see how I did that? I put my finger here to hold them flat, and then I slid this down on top and kind of maneuvered it like that. Okay, it's in place. Now this is the back side. This is where you can sign your card, and this is the front side that they see. If you wanna add, again, little embellishments you can, but check this out. We have medium-sized envelopes. You can take and put them right within, and it's ready to mail. Ah! <laughs> right? Super cool, and it's so stunning when it opens up. Look at that. I'm so excited. So I call it the star column card. Um, we have a couple other examples. So this one here, I did early espresso ink. This is using another one of the sheets. It has the swirly pink on one side, and then it has these little gold flower um, images on the inside, which you can see better if I tilt it this way. There's the flower images, um, little leaves and flowers. Again, the gold foil circle behind. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, use the correct sentiment uh, outline here on this one that I, that I use the same one accidentally because here this is the one I meant to show you guys there's that finished one that uses the dotted outline on both sides and this uses the dots and the lines and then on the back side of that it looks like that so those two are very similar you don't have to have a lot of excess things besides the things I've already shown you except for the ink color changes and that's because I just wanted it to stand out a little bit more against the pink paper and I thought using the red it just wasn't bold enough so that's why I brought in the early espresso for that one. Now on the third card, <clears throat> so here's the envelopes for those. On the third card, I had a lot more red in there and I really wanted that gold and red to just ba-boom, you know, show off there. Um, I hope your day is filled with joy, kind of a wedding-ish card, right? So I added some embellishments. These are the uh, birds and dragonfly, um, self-adhesive birds and dra uh, dragonflies and birds, that's what they're called. Adhesive back dragonflies and birds. And they're fairly flat, so they shouldn't cause a lot of bulk on your card. Um, I have two birds on that side. Done the same way, except this here is not done with just simple ink. What you do is you stamp with Versamark ink, and then you take 
um, gold embossing powder and sprinkle it on, shake the excess off, and heat it, heat emboss. So this is heat embossing. Um, it has a little raised feel to it, and that's how you get that gold look. Um, and then on the back side, I used white paper, the basic white cardstock, so that we could you know, write something on the back side when we give the card away. But again, it's gold embossed, so this is gold embossing on that side. So that's the extras that I used on that card. Star column cards, you guys, super simple ways to make them without having too much bulk or weight, um, without uh, having to sit and be really careful on how you put your columns together. It's super easy. Okay, um, let me go back to this PDF because I really want to make sure that you guys know that you can access this PDF. It's going to be available in about 30 some minutes on my blog. Right now, um, as we're doing the live, the uh, blog, uh, the YouTube description does have a link to that blog post. It won't be active until 12.15, so in a little over 30 minutes. When I get done with the live, what I do is I quickly get over to my Facebook live that just ended and I transfer that information in there. So those of you that are watching on Facebook, I can get that over to you as soon as possible. Um, uh, let's take a peek at those cards one more time. We have prizes. So if you haven't commented yet, and I forgot to tell you this at the beginning, but I hope it's kind of assumed. When you comment, <laughs> you get perks. You get a chance to win prizes, and um, it's just kind of fun. So you know what I'll do? I'll move to the promotions next. We'll talk about promotions, and then we'll do the prizes. So if you haven't commented yet, please shout out. Share the video and comment that you've shared it. Um, I love to you know, have my ideas out there so more people can see. I love to share. I'm a paper crafter and it's fun to teach these ideas. So make sure that you are sharing and then letting me know that you shared by just saying that in the comments. Shared. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel or you're not connected to my Facebook page, that sort of thing, I invite you to do so. You can do that at this point. And I always like thumbs up as well. Okay, um, promotions. So Stampin' Up! has promotions that happen all the time. We are in the midst of an awesome promotion called Sale Abration. Sale Abration is, and I'm gonna grab my pamphlet here, it's a time of year when you can get free product through purchases, um, through larger size orders called uh, workshop orders or host, you know, by hosting, but you can just get that by placing a $300 or more order. You don't have to have your friends in on orders with you. It just has to be that size of an order. Um, so there's host specials, there's um, the free with a purchase kind of thing. $50 is the minimum in the US. And then there's also the uh, bonus for getting the starter kit during this time. And I did kind of show it to you while we were doing the live. It is this lovely glass mat. And the glass mat um, comes with a couple extras here. It comes with um, this little guy here. I'm still learning the names of everything and hang on. Um, and I've got this little chamois. So the chamois is for cleaning off your work surface. It cleans off a tons, tons of things just with water. You just get your, your water in there. And look, I cleaned off a little bit of adhesive there. Um, this can cling to your mat and it can hold things. You can mix inks in here. You can also mix inks directly on here. Um, but this is a wonderful, wonderful addition to your crafting room and it's free with the starter kit this month. So you just purchase the starter kit at regular price it's $125 worth of merchandise for 99 plus tax, free shipping, but this gets added in. If you don't want this because maybe you're um, you know, an avid crafter, you've already got something similar, you can then choose an additional $30 worth of product instead. So you get to choose $155 worth of product instead of $125. Still the same price though, 99 plus tax. Um, if you're interested, you can go to my blog and you can click on the join tab and it will tell you more. Love to have you in our group of Stampers with Art Stars if you'd like to join. Uh, so that's what's going on there, plus the, this little pamphlet and the online store shows you free goodies. One of those free goodies I just used today, it's the limited time paper called Most Adored, and there it is. It's a free pack of designer paper with a $50 purchase. So you could get that hexagon, um, heartfelt hexagon bundle, uh, or any other product and spend at least 50 and get that paper for free. I'm trying to think. Um, new products, celebration. We have new kits. Every month there are new kits and I'm a kit fanatic. In fact, the prizes that we have going on right now 
have to do with the um, the kit video. Again, I'm not as organized as I normally am. I would have had these pulled out for you. Where are they? Maybe I don't have them with me. Okay, well, I just did a video with the, uh, hang on, let me peek here. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Are they back here? Uh, shoot, I don't know where they are. <laughs> I just did a video um, and was uh, on in California when the video went live, but it's using the best destinations kit. You know what I'll do? I'll pull up that video, or not the video, I'll pull up the, um, the product in the online store so you can see it. So check this out. We're gonna move to the online store quickly. I'm just gonna put in the word destination in the search bar. Destination, there it is. So I did a video where I took this kit, the best destination kit, and I changed out all the parts and pieces to make a ton of extra fun fold cards. So today's prize, for those of you that are commenting during the live, you'll get in on a chance to win some extra goodies that were left over from all the kits that I had purchased because I purchased a lot of kits to give parts and pieces to my team members. <laughs> so, um, so Trisha, actually, I gotta give you the heads up here. If you can, can you call out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 winners? <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah, we need a couple more winners. Um, you know what, this is what we'll do. I'll pick five from Facebook and Trisha will do six from YouTube, okay? So I'll do five afterwards and I'll call them out next week. So we'll do five, uh, six winners, ex uh, six winners from YouTube today. All right, Trisha? So give me four more names, do your random thing again. Um, let me show these things to you. Don't call them out yet though, Trisha, because I have to announce last week's prizes as, or not last week's, but two, three weeks ago? Because it's been a couple weeks since I've been live. Okay, let's go down to the desktop. This is, um, hang on, I got one more part to that. Where did they go? Again, Rachel is normally organized. Here they are, as I drop things on the ground. So I have these little guys too, they came with them. So if you maybe love the kit but weren't interested in getting the kit but you'd love to have the excess supplies, well then you're gonna be happy today because the whole stamp set, I've got 11 extras, I've got some twine, some little adhesive dots, I've got some tiny little mini dimensionals, and I've got the gorgeous grape ink pad. Now, if you have the kit already and you have the stamp set, you can refuse it and instead get in on either a Wink of Stella or I do have an extra bone folder. So everybody has choices, right? Wink of Stella or bone folder or the kit goodie. And Trish is going to choose six winners today I'm going to tell you last time's prize, and last time's prize from the, oh, what video was it now? I'm trying to think of which one it was. It had the, the pop bottle, the soda pop and all of that. So that video had five sheets of this beautiful variety pack of foil. These are, um, here, these are sold out. And these are still available. I have two extra sheets of regular silvers from that silver specialty bag. Anyways, you get a, a sh um, five sheets of six by six silver and a Tombow glue bottle if your name is announced by me right now. These are for after live comments and you had basically three weeks to comment afterwards to get in on that. So let me bring you to my computer and show you the names of those winners. Um, oh, I picked three winners because I'll show you why in a minute here. Let's go over to, it's a winner day, you guys. It's a winner day. <laughs> winners, winners, yay. And I'm gonna put up my email here too. Okay, so Trisha, first I'm calling out the winners for, ah, I got a blurriness going on here. The winners for last time's live. So we have from YouTube, Tina Marie Buckman. Tina Marie Buckman, you are the winner for the after live comments, you get um, packet of five designer papers plus you get some Tombow glue reach out to me at my email address so that you can claim your prize you need to give me your address for mailing it to you now I'm gonna give you the next name the next name that I call uh, that I drew for from Facebook was Alex uh, Alexina Walsh
from Nova Scotia. So she's not in the US. And once I saw her comment, I'm like, well, she can only, well, not that she can only get a tutorial, but she can only choose the tutorial. So, um, so the tutorial, Alexan, uh, Alex, uh, ooh, I love your name, but I'm trying to remember how to say it. Alexina, Alexina, um, you can pick from one of my tutorials. So you just go to my blog and my website and you click on shop and then it'll bring you to the tutorials and you can pick which one and email me. So email me your choice. Because we had someone choosing a tutorial, that means I still had extra products. So I picked two people from Facebook and my third winner from the last time I was live is Janine Kim, uh, Nipple, Janine Nim, Nip, Nipple. I think that's how you say it. Um, so uh, make sure that you reach out to me at my uh, email address, stampyourartout at comcast.net. Um, okay, I think that's it. Those are the three names that I picked. Now I'm gonna go over to Trisha. In fact, hang on, there we go, because I'm not showing anything else on my desk. Um, and we're gonna see what six winners she picked. And again, the six winners can choose from either the Wink of Stella or the Bone Folder. I have one of those, um, I have three Wink of Stellas. Or you can have the Stamp Set, uh, Ink Spot, the leftovers from the kit, okay? So let's see, did Trisha choose some names? I'm gonna scroll through on my computer here. I don't see them quite yet. She's gotta pick six names, you guys. I gotta give her a minute. We're gonna be live next week. Um, next week we'll, um, oops, has she said them yet? Not yet. Okay, we're gonna be live next week and um, that will be Wednesday, January 24th. There they are. <laughs> oh my gosh, Trisha, I'm so sorry that I put this uh, last minute pressure on you. So, so sorry. I'm seeing the names come through and they're starting to, they're on my computer, I'm waiting for, here they are. There we go, I tagged one. All right, so we have winners, Linda Kraus, Cindy Morgan, Christina Fullen, Joan Homer, and the, oh, we have a few more, hang on, the Peggy Five and Louise Fox. I'll say the names again. Linda Kraus, Cindy Morgan, Christina Fullen, Joan Horner, the Peggy Five, and Louise Fox. Um, you can't see Louise, Louise is on there, sorry about that. but. Yay, right? Yay, so many goodies. I agree with you, Jean. All right, so um, so please reach out to me. Again, here's my email address. Reach out to me at stampyourart.comcast.net. I would love it if you give me the thumbs up, click like, um, all that kind of thing. Um, oh, what else? Subscribe, you know, all that stuff that us YouTubers ask you to do. <laughs> so, um, and again, I'll be live next week, Wednesday, 11 a.m. Central Time. I'm gonna share even more paper crafting uh, projects with you. And I'll, I promise to be more organized next time. I'm sorry, just flew in last night. That's my excuse, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I hope I'm not. Take care, everyone. I keep looking at my notes. All right, take care. The blog post will be live in 20 minutes. Then you can click on the PDF, all that kind of fun stuff. Take care and we will see you next week. Now I would like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.